Everybody, my name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Elon. And I'm Jason. And we are the Huna Tour YouTube channel. And it is a Shabbat. Yay! All right. Hey, thank you everybody for who's out there. We love you guys very, very much. Our family is your family. Your family is our family. And we cannot say how happy we are that we see you guys out there. Nicole is running the chat room. And we are um, just doing what we normally do here. Our ceiling is being very noisy. We thought it was going to rain, but hopefully it's not going to be like the hurricane last week and um, I guess let's begin with a simple word of prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another day. We thank you for your Shabbat. Father, you are our creator. You are gracious. You have provided us with a way forward and that is called the Torah. You have provide us a Melchizedek priest and that is Yahushua. Father, you have provided every road that we need. All we need to do is be obedient to you. Father, I ask that you will bless those who are being obedient to you. Father, bless those who are seeking you. Father, help us to be enhanced with your word. Help us to understand what we are going to be seeing. Father, let your word be forever true. Let your name forever be praised in the Shemaim. And we thank you for everything. And Father, we ask that this 
this reading is blessed by you. We ask this in the name of Yahushua. Amen. All right, everybody. How are you guys doing? Family, how are you guys doing? How's good. everyone doing? Over good. Here? Everyone alive? Yeah. Everyone kicking here? Um, we are on the, um, well, what day are we on? So we are Shabbat. It is, I don't have my calendar ready because we're, we're Nicole and I are in some more calendar confusion issues here. She's trying to get to the bottom of 365 days, Four. 364 days. And right now, what is the count that we are at? 354. 354. And Jasher, was it Jubilees? Jubilees and Enoch and Jasher all actually say 354 that, days. It, it, or 64 days. 64. It says all the people are going to go astray and they're not going to get the 364 days. So we're trying to figure out this calendar to the very best of our abilities. And we're trying to figure out where 10 days in a year go or why it is that everybody's getting confused about the 10, 10 days. And so we're going down the rabbit hole, and I don't, I can't say that we've actually gotten any kind of answers or anything of the sort. But it is the, it is Sukkot. We are definitely in the feast of Sukkot. And for those of you out there who are keeping Sukkot, I know a couple of you guys out there, Zachariah Z and the family. I guess you guys are doing a pop up trailer out in the middle of somewhere, and um, it's it's cool. So yeah, every, I think they're back. I think they're, they said they were went for three days. Yeah, I know, but they they did that for Sukkot. So that, that was super cool that you guys did that. And for everybody who's able to keep Sukkot, um, it is yet another feast of our creators. So that takes us into um, what we do every Shabbat, and yes. we go over the laws, statutes, and commands. And Nicole wants to say hi to everybody in the chat room. Go ahead, say hi. <laughs> so we have, I already did, but we have the Grand, we have Carla, we have Zachariah and Rihanna, Rhiannon, sorry, uh, Damon, Emissary of Elohim, and whoever else is there that hasn't popped in and said hi, hi to all of you. Yeah, hi everybody out there. You guys are definitely our family out there. It is super, super good to see you guys out there. And what we do on a Shabbat is what we do every week on a Shabbat. And we've been faithful to this. And we're going to read over the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator. And we are supposed to etch these up on our hearts, minds, and souls. They're supposed to be everything that we embrace, everything that we rise up to in the mornings is what we're supposed to go to bed to at night. It's it's supposed to be everything on this. And, and th last week, we went, we went a little slow. And um, this week, we're going we're gonna to kick this one up a little bit. We're going to go over these, and they're very important. And if anyone has any kind of questions out there or anyone has comments on the commands as we're going through them, uh, Nicole will break in, and we will go over them. We really, really want to hear from you guys out there. And so this is not just a boss clan sitting here rambling and yakking it up. This is um, boss clan and all you guys clan, all of us together as a super big Yaz clan. And um, we, we want to hear from you guys and, and things of that nature. So I'm going to kick this off. Is everyone ready here? Yep. Okay. So the very first one is be fruitful. Let's hit it. All Multiply. Right. Replenish the, the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion over the fish, fowl, and every living creature. Okay. Now, I, I went, and for anybody who actually listens to Youth for Yah, I actually listened to that the other day. And it's not actually listened to it. I listen to it all the time. But I found it was very easy to listen to it at 25% speed off of that. And I have to apologize because we, I guess we speak like like lightning or something around here. Um, and I guess it comes from a lifetime of being in the tech industry. And we just, I guess everything we do is kind of fast. Um, so I guess starting here, I will slow down myself and try to do that. But Cade, when you just read that, have dominion over the fish, fowl, and every living thing that possibly could have been another language to somebody who doesn't have English as their first one. So let's go a little slow on this. Even though we're going fast, let's just kind of make sure our we're enunciating it, fam, here. Okay, five, the herb bearing in every tree is for food. Man and woman should build their own families. Master sin. Every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Do not eat the blood. Walk before me and be perfect. Guard Yahuwah's covenant, laws, statutes, and commandments. 53 times it or more, it's reiterated guys to guard the commandments of our creator okay every male shall be circumcised at eight days old okay teach your children the commands and guard the way of yahuwah remember yahuwah's name for all generations keep the passover pesach keep the feast of unleavened bread matzah there's one torah for the stranger and one for the Hebrew. and i want to pause right here on this because I know there was a discussion between Brother Glenn and Barkley this week, a fear monger. Is he fear monger in here? He just popped in. Fear monger's in here? And so is Mason. And so Mason. Hey, Mason, what's up, little brother? How you sure doing? Deborah's here, too. And Deborah, how you doing? Hi, everybody out there. Much love. Huge, huge love to all you guys. So we had this conversation, and the conversation went kind of like something like, um, Brother Glenn was talking about how the, the commandment for Sukkot was that you were a native to 
the, the Yisrael. And so I, I made some points in there and Barclay was kind of on the same thing there. The, the point that I had to make is there is one Torah for the stranger and one for the Ibrahim, right? There, that means there's one Torah for everybody. And, you know, I know everyone's like, people are really hyperdrived on the whole bloodline thing. And the Jews will be like, well, you're not, you're not uh, of the bloodline of the Jewish people. After Messiah Yahushua, it, I, I can't say that I've ever seen a reason that the bloodline means anything. We understand where Messiah Yahushua came from and we got the lineage all the way to there. But we were thousands of years later. We are completely mixed bloodlines. We are completely, I mean, there's, there's, it would be extremely hard to even figure this out. And the kingdom of Yah is not about bloodlines. It's not about race. It's not about any uh, heritage or anything like that. Yes, back in the day prior to where we are now, I can see that happening. And we absolutely needed to know where the lineage was to our Messiah. But beyond that, you know, the kingdom of heaven is, is made up of those who keep the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator. I, I can't see anything else. And I, we end up with a lot of like angry people who, who are skin color based on other platforms. And they, they are like, well, only the blacks are saved, only the whites are saved, only the yellows are saved or something, you know, and, and they never stop. And it, the kingdom of heaven is not made up of that. There's never been a single command ever that divides us as as these kind of uh, skin colors or things of this nature. So anyway, I just want to point that out that there is one Torah for all of us, right? Even if you are not a what they call native born, if you were not literally born over there, because you can be a native born Israelite and fall away from the law, statutes and commands and you are you're back to the Gentile state. So that's my only point. Do we have anything in the in the things? Emissary of Elohim says that after you listed off we all got to sing in a harmony and sing the Shema as a family. I told him that people would turn off the channel if we started singing. Oh, yeah. You don't want to hear that. <laughs> Make a joyful noise is, is it. The noise is the key part of that. So, all right. Let's continue on, guys. 18. Sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make graven image. Do, do not bring Yahuwah's name to naught. Keep the Shabbat. Honor your parents. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Slow down, Eli. <laughs> Do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he shall restore it five times. There's a law for criminals, and there's a, there's a whole set of laws for all this kind of stuff, and one of them is Commandment 32, and that's the law for criminals. You shall stone the witches, wizards, and mediums. In the land of of Yisrael, right? Outside the land, you'll end up in the clink if you do such things. Do not lie with beasts. No sacrifices to other to other gods. Do not oppress a stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, return it to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false report. Do not follow a multitude of evil. Do not judge unrighteously against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress a stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land a rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feast of Yahuwah. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends before you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Do not make or use this anointing oil on a normal person. And that goes 57, 58 are two, two things together. It's just a, a perfumer's recipe, and that's what we don't use. It's, it's, it's special to Yah. Do not eat the fat. Do what you say you are going to do. Return what is your neighbor's. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Woman's time of separation. Stay away from her. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Keep the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippurim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's sister for a wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. You shall not offer sacri you shall not sacrifice your children to Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be holy. Do not reap the corners of your field or you shall not glean your vineyard. Do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor. Do not lie or be a liar. Pay your workers for the day's wage they are due. Do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not diverse your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle linen and wool. Do not lie with a taken woman. Do not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round the, your beard or the corners of your head. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Do not get tattoos. 
Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measures. Do not walk in the manners of the nations. Keep the feast of first fruits, Shavuot, Omer count. Keep the feast of trumpets, Yom Terah. Keep the feast of Sukkot, Shemini Atzeret. If you blaspheme the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. Confess your sins to Yahuwah and repay who you have trespassed against. The Torah of being a Nazir. Wear zitzits on the four corners of your garments. The law of whoever touches a corpse. Follow Yahuwah's law of inheritance. Torah of keeping your oath to Yahuwah. When in the land, the laws of a murder and the victim's families. Do not take or add, do not add or take away from the word. Very important. Guard your soul. Very important. Learn to fear Yahuwah. Very important. All these super important. Shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Bind the laws upon your hand and the frontlets between your eyes. Write the laws on your doorposts. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave to Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Destroy graven images. Do not make an idol of Yahuwah as the pagans do to their Elohim. Rejoice in all Yahuwah has blessed you with. Do not do what is right in your own eyes. Do not hearken to the words of a false prophet. Kill the false prophets. Do not listen and kill those that try to turn you away from Yahuwah, even if they are family members. And again, the guys, for those, anyone that has not read or have been to this channel before, we, I, I must kind of put, these are in asterisks right here, right? The importance of this command is that in the land, if somebody was coming to sell you another Elohim or another religion or another thing outside of the ways of Yah, you were supposed to pick up rocks and kill them. That's just the way it is. So we left this command in here, even though most you're, you're not going to pick, you know, you're not going to see the Jehovah's Witnesses at your door and, and throw sticks at them or something. But that is how important it is to our Creator that we stay on track with Him and never ever take our eyes away from Him. Do not take or uh, one thirty. One thirty. Oh, if a city has turned away from Yahuwah. Burn the city and kill all inhabitants. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall give to a stranger of clean food that dies of itself, but you shall not eat of it. Give tithe of your increase of seed year by year. Laws of the end of the seven-year lease. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not harden your heart, nor shut your hand from the poor. Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Three times a year all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judges and officers in all your gates. Do not plant Asherah poles near the altar and kill those you find planting Asherah poles. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. You just but added. I, it, but it's the same thing. It's, it's no other gods. It, it, yeah, there, if there's another thing. Th 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 if you saw some guy putting a oh, Christmas yeah. tree up next to the temple, you would go out there and with your band of friends and you would take them outside the gates and you'd chuck rocks at them until they stopped doing that. Any man <laughs> or woman that has done wicked things in your gates, they shall be taken out and stoned. There must be two or three witnesses. Or come to the prophet Yahuwah has chosen. There's a prophet test, and he follows Deuteronomy. Hold him to it. Do not remove your neighbor's property line. How to deal with a false witness among Torah keepers. The first child is to get double portions. The law of the wayward son. If a man is hung to death, he shall not remain all night. If your brother's cattle or clothes are lost, and you find them, you must return them. A woman should not wear what pertains to a man, nor a man wear what pertains to a woman. If you find a bird's nest with the mother and the babies, or eggs, take the babies, but not the mother. Okay, if you build a new house with a flat roof that is able to be lived on, well, even if it's not supposed to be, if, you, if you're up there on the flat roof, any time that somebody could fall off the side of your roof, that's you're, not, you're supposed to put a railing around it. Laws for the accuser and the accused in purity of relationships. If a man has a relationship with an engaged woman, both should be killed. If an engaged woman is raped, she's not charged with the crime, but the man shall die. If a man forces himself upon an undefiled woman, he must pay the father and take her to be his wife and never divorce her. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. You may eat from your neighbor's vineyard or grain, but you may not take it out of the field. And there's a law of divorce in case it doesn't work out, but Messiah Yahushua says you need to only do it in case of adultery. Okay. Newly married men should stay home for one year to be with his wife. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. If a man is found kidnapping, he shall die. If you lend to your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset, if that was his pledge. Do not oppress a hired servant. 
that is poor and needy. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Do not, do not go back for the forgotten sheep in the field. Leave it for the stranger, fatherless, and widow. You cannot give a man more than forty stripes for his judgment of his wickedness. Do not muzzle your ox when he treads out grain. If your brother dies and has no child, you should take his wife and name the firstborn after your brother. If a woman comes to defend her man and grabs the other man's privates, you shall cut off her hand. There goes that hand. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah at the Feast of Sukkot. Now, I'm going to give everyone a quick headache as we go to the top here. And i got to go right here. And we want to go over this real quick because these are very, very important. So these are the laws, not even laws. And I, I don't want to get this wrong because there is not stuff outside of the Torah that Messiah Yahushua adds to the Torah. What he does is he teaches us how to live the Torah a better way, a better fashion, a better, more details to it. If anything, I guess the proper description would be Messiah Yahushua's stuff would be an adjective to the, the proper nouns that we already have. And he's telling us descriptive words to it and ways to do this better. And so yeah, let's go ahead and let's run through these real quick. Um, Jade, do you have your very first one? Yep. Commandment number one. Do not be angry with your brother. Okay. Eli. Don't call your brother names. Don't call anyone a fool. Forgive your brother before you go ask for forgiveness. Sell your dispute with your enemy before it goes too far. You lust after another person, you have broken wedlock. If you can't stop doing evil, do whatever it takes to stop the evil. That includes plucking your eye out, chopping your hand off, things of that nature is the example. Do not put your woman away except for committing adultery. Do not swear falsely by heaven, earth, nor by yourself. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Turn the other cheek. Stop the conflict and make peace. Go the full distance to help. If someone needs something, give it to them. Love your enemy. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them that persecute you. Do not take your alms before men. Do not pray like the hypocrites. How to pray? Do not repeat in your prayers. Forgive men their transgressions. When you fast, don't look sad. Do not store treasures up on earth but in heaven. You cannot serve two masters. Do not worry about where your food, water, or clothing comes from. Seek the kingdom of Yahuwah. Do not worry about today. Judge not that, you, that ye be not judged. Do not give holy things unto the dogs and swine. Ask, seek, knock, and it will be given. Do unto others you want done to you. Enter in at the narrow gate. Beware of false prophets. All right, that is it. Um, now, before we head into this, first of all, we'll jump into the um, first thing I want to do is I'm going to take you guys. I'm going to spin your your heads here a little bit. I got to go to the top, and I want to give a, I guess, a disclaimer on what we're reading here. So, the disclaimer is this: this is the the Targum of Palestine, and there is so far I found maybe I don't know four different versions of this stuff and. What we need to understand is we need be, we just went over as as a group all of us right we just went over the laws statutes and commands 174 of the commandments and then we had the fine tuned details which do not really add to the Torah it just finds to it but we know what the base is and so as we read extracurricular books such as the Targum and I don't know so much as if the Targum is an extracurricular book or if we are missing some of the better details. But when we start talking about Babylonian influence, we have to be aware of the leaven that is going to be introduced. And this is the leaven that Messiah Yahushua is talking about that always ends up polluting the, the, the bread. It messes with the dough. And so when we, we do, we will end up with a little bit of leaven today. And what I will define this by saying we, are, we live how we should be living in the, the world of numbers. We have month one, we have month two, month three, month four. We have day one, day two, day three, day four. That's how our creator gave us this. He did not give us things like Tishri. He definitely did not give us things like Tammuz or uh, Aviv or anything like that, right? We have words like this, and we know that Tammuz is an evil pagan. It was the son of uh, Samaramus and, and Nimrod. Um, and it was uh, it was an evil evil child. We shouldn't even be saying that. So we are going to see that today in the Targum, where they actually bring um, names of the month to this. But I would say, wow, we should throw this out. But the problem is the Bible, the scriptures that we have, do the exact same thing. So somewhere along the line, when 
they have brought in Babylonian influence, and this is why we absolutely need to be rock solid in the Torah. And so I believe this group is smart enough. I believe we're educated enough. I believe that we have read the Torah enough that we are able to decipher between what we find and what we, we, you know, things that we should find and we should keep and things that we should find that we should spit out. What's the analogy? Um, eating the meat and spitting out the bones is a lot of it. And so as we go into this today, I want folks to be aware that we are going to get into a little bit of leaven, but we are also reading this from the Hallelujah Scriptures, and I believe this is probably one of the very best translations ever. And um, I guess I, this is probably a good time to, to let folks know how we're doing on this Hallelujah Scriptures project. And we have kind of been stuck a little bit, and let me zoom in on this side right here. Once you guys done doing this, if you guys look like right here, See this stuff? This uh, wait till this uh, goes back. It'll go to it's maybe it won't. There it is. Okay, so now you guys can see it. But underneath where it says "I have gained," and you guys see the ghost words below that, we've been Nicole has been doing everything possible, humanly possible, to try to figure out the right scan that we don't end up with ghost words in this. And I don't, I don't know if we have an answer for this. So that's why we haven't, we, we would have already had the Hallelujah Scriptures completely already scanned and out and into a format for you guys. Um, but she was trying on some other stuff. And the only other option is it makes it really dark. And I like this light. And so I think this is what we're going to have to deal with. And maybe somebody somewhere else, once we get the Hallelujah Scriptures printed off and, and to where you guys can do it, maybe someone will take the project. And literally, you would have to go through every single page, every single line and use an eraser tool and get rid of that to make this the perfect copy. So that's what we've been doing on. We've been trying to get the perfect copy on this because I, I think it's important that we do have a good copy of this for everybody. So um, is everyone ready to start? I think so. yep. Okay, Nicole, anything going on in the chat room? Um, the Grand just said that we need Phineas for the U for America. America needs Phineas. So. You need a whole bunch of Phineases. <laughs> you need a great, get the spears. Let's get the spears and let's uh, um, go take care of business. Okay, all right, guys, let's go into this to see what the, the Ruha Kakadesh has for us, and um, yeah, let's do it. Okay, and Adam knew Kawa, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, and said, I have gained a man from Yahuwah. Guys, I'm starting at the bottom, on the on the bottom side, which is the Hallelujah Scriptures. The top part is the Targum. Um, Cain and Jaden are reading out the Hallelujah Scriptures, uh, the big, the fine, the other print. Nicole, are you, what are you reading out of? I have the Amplified. She's reading out the Amplified Bible. So we have one, two, three, like four different sets of doctrine. Not doctrine, but different translations. And again, I'm so sorry for the roof. It just makes tremendous amounts of noise. Okay, so before this, we, we why do we know of Eve's name is Eve? Anyone? Oh, uh, when it's supposed to be Kawa. Yeah, and that's it, in the Hallelujah Scriptures. This is the H's are. A, it sounds like a K. And there's so, a little dot under there. Yeah, it has a dot under the H. It means K. So that's Kawa. And so we're not exactly great on the uh, pronunciations, but we will all get better, and hopefully we'll figure this out. Okay, and this will clear up here in just a second. Verse two. And again, she gave birth to his brother Habel, and Habel became a keeper of sheep, but Cain became a tiller of the ground. Okay, are we ready to go up top? Yeah, until Earth. Okay, so we're heading up to the top part, which is the Targum, and there's a lot of stuff in this, lots and lots of stuff. My question was, will always be, where did this go? And then our, our part is to cut out or to look in through it and to find out, is this scripture or is this not? Does this go against the Torah in any way? Is this something we should reject and kick to the curb? Or is this something that we should have and find details that somehow we ended up with non-fine details? Okay, so chapter four. And Adam knew Hawa, Haba, his wife, who had desired the angel. And she conceived and bare Cain. And she said, I have acquired a man. Okay, I'm going to stop right there because right out of the gate, we've heard something we've never heard before. Actually, I did hear this a long time ago. Brother um, Todd Bennett, in one of his books, alluded to something of the sort like this. And there's a lot of people that are like, well, the, the serpent must have had relationships with Eve and that's where Cain came from. The problem is they never had their kids until long after they were out of the garden. It was like, what, how many months? It was after? seven years. It was seven oh, years. seven years, yeah, seven years. It, wasn't, it was longer than that. So um, unless the birth of a child was, you know, uh, whatever, nine months times seven years or something, um, it wouldn't have been that. So definitely... 
Um, the Cain was not the offspring of the serpent, and everyone's like, well, that's a serpent. See, it was impossible that could ever be there. Plus, Eve would have been defiled, right? Under the Torah, she would have never, ever been able to go back into Adam. She would have, ne it, would have it would have been defiled. But that's something interesting that we've never, ever heard that she, who had desired the angel. So I'll leave it at that, and we'll, we'll continue on. The angel of Yahuwah, and she added to bear from her husband Adam, his twin, even Habel. And Habel was the shepherd of the flock, but Cain was a man working in the earth. Okay, so two things here, guys. What, what do we know? Anything different of this? I don't think Cain and Abel were twins. They, see, that's the thing is when you read the book of Adam and Eve, it talk, they were actually twins. Mm -mm. But they weren't not to each other. Not to each other. <laughs> yes, they were twins. They they had a twin. They both had sisters, and they were twins. And so, um, you if you read the book of Adam and Eve, it talks a, a tremendous amount about this. I think in Jubilee's will, it talks about the daughters they have. Do they? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Where are we at? You are. You are on verse three in there. Verse three, and it came to be, right here. Yep. Okay, and it came to be in the course of time that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to Yahuwah. And Hebel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And Yahuwah looked to Hebel and his offering, but he did not look to Cain and his offering. And Cain was very wroth, and his face fell. Right. Okay, starting up here. Yeah. And, and, okay. Oh. and it was at the end of, the, of days, on the 14th of Nisan, here's 11, right? Uh, that Cain brought the produce of the earth, the seed of cotton or lin, line, an oblation of first things before Yahuwah. And Hebo brought of the firstlings of the flock and of their fat. And it was pleasing before Yahuwah. And he gave his countenance to Hebel and to his oblation. But to Cain and to his oblation, he gave no countenance. And Cain was angered greatly. Okay. Um, anything else or are we moving on to the next one? Uh, you missed the last sentence. Okay. And Cain was angered greatly, and the features of his face were downcast. Okay, so we'll, we'll end there. And this is kind of confusing, guys, going back and forth here. Where You're we? on six. Six? Okay. One has, one has numbers, one doesn't, and one has a ton more stuff in there. Okay, let's continue on. And Yahuwah said to Cain, why are you wroth, and why is your face fallen? If you do well, is there not acceptance? And if you do not do well... Sin is crouching at the door, and its desire is for you, but you should master it. Okay? What does he say, master it? What's, what's that mean? He's saying master sin. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a command. We need to master sin. And that was one of our, our commandments that we had. Okay? And uh, you go. Okay. And Cain told Hebel, his brother, come, let us go into the field. And it came to be when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Hebel, his brother, and killed him. And Yahuwah said to Cain, where is Hebel, your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's guard? Okay. Back up to right here. And Yahuwah. Okay. And Yahuwah said to Cain, why hast thou anger? And why are the features of thy face downcast? If thou doest thy work well, will not thy guilt be forgiven thee? But if thou doest not thy work well in this world, thy sin is retained unto the day of the great judgment. And at the doors of thy heart... Lieth thy sin, and into thy hand have I delivered the power over evil, and unto thee shall be the inclination thereof, that thou mayest have authority over it to become righteous or to sin. And Cain said unto Abel, his brother, Come, let us let us two go forth into the field. And it was that when they two had gone forth into the field, Cain answered and said to Hebel, I perceive that the world was created in goodness. But it is not governed or conducted according to the fruit of good works. For there is respect to persons in judgment. Therefore, if it is that thy offering was accepted and mine not accepted with good will. Habel answered and said to Cain, In goodness was the world created, and according to the fruit of, thy, of good works it is governed. And there is no respect of persons in judgment. But because the fruit of my works were better than thine, my oblation before thine hath been accepted with good will. Cain answered and said to Habel, there is neither judgment, nor judge, nor another world, nor will good be given to the righteous, nor vengeance be taken of the wicked. And Habel answered and said to Cain, there is judgment, there is a judgment, and there is a judge, and there is another world, and a good reward given to the righteous, and vengeance taken of the wicked. 
And because of these words, they had contention upon the face of the field. And Cain arose against Hebel, his brother, and drave a stone into his forehead and killed him. Okay, guys, what did we just learn from this that we've never learned before? Jade? Basically, uh, basically the, the argument they had, how he's like, Cain didn't believe in like a judgment, like a world of judgment, and he didn't he, believe that righteous were going to be blessed. He basically like, believed like Sadducees, I think. Sadducees, he, but it sounded to me like he was throwing a fit, like a kid would he throw a fit. He was very upset, and, then, and we learned Adam and Eve that he was very upset with his brother, he was trying to find a reason to hurt him because he wanted one of his other sisters' wife, but... Adam and Eve want to give it to Abel because he was more righteous than Cain. Yeah, and we don't know if the books of Adam and Eve are, are like legitimate or they're in there at all. If you do read the books of Adam and Eve, it does say the same stuff, that that Adam was kicked out of the garden for not keeping his statutes, his laws, his commandments. And it also tells uh, far more stuff than we ever knew. But from the book of Adam and Eve, we know that Cain had a twin sister and Habel, Abel, had a twin sister as well. Right. And it was supposed to be married in the book of Adam and Eve. It said that um, Cain was supposed to marry the sister of Abel and Abel was supposed to marry the sister of Cain. And I guess the sister of, of Abel wasn't good looking enough for Cain and Cain got very upset. And the way the marriage was going to go down, Cain was already very angry about this whole thing. And so this was the, the lead in to the actual thing. Now, do we know before that he drove a stone into his forehead? Um, we know from Jasher that he took a part like, of the plow. Part of was that from Book of Adam and Eve or Jasher. plow? Was uh, it from Jasher? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think Adam and Eve said it was also a plow shear or shear, something from a shear that he... Uh, so it was some sort of sharp rock that he probably had on the front of his plowing device. Why are we? Why do we have differing things on all this? Why Why is this... Do we have, First of all, is this... Do we have anything that's wrong yet? Do we have anything that we would say that... I don't think... I think so far, everything lines up. I mean, a stone and between Jasher and this, I mean, there could be different no. things. Like, the stone could, it could have been... It could be a sharp stone. It could be like a sharp stone that he had made for the front of his plow to plow. Right. I'm sure they didn't have fabricated tools quite like that back then. Right. So that's probably what it was. And uh, another thing I see that could be wrong is the thing about Eve and the angel. How... But, I mean... But he, here's what it was. Here's what I think it was because... Where he where who said, and your desire was for your wife, and your urge desire was for your husband. I think that's where she basically just said you listen to your husband, where like where she listened to the angel, which was Hasatan, where she felt him. I don't think it was where she like wanted to be with him. I think it was where she felt him is what it meant by like Eve who felt the angel. Right. She she actually went under the authority of somebody else and right. she because I, your desire is for the husband, he will not rule over you. And basically, I think he's just saying because she fell to the angel. Uh, that's a, that's a very good point. All right. Nine. Nine. Okay. And Yahuwah, now, how these scriptures at the bottom, guys? And Yahuwah said to Cain, where is Hebel, your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's guard? And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. If you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you, you shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Okay. Um, you want, yeah, you want to finish reading Cain's curse? Okay. And Cain said to Yahuwah, My wickedness is too great to bear. See who had driven me from the face of the ground today, and I am hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and it shall be that anyone who finds me kills me. And Yahuwah said to him, Well, if anyone kills Cain, vengeance is taken on him sevenfold. And Yahuwah placed a sign for Cain, lest anyone finding him kills him. Okay, so we've always heard about this sign, right? Mm -hmm. Up until today, we're about to find out what the sign was. Nobody knew this. I, back in the day, people were speculating the different colors of races. Like, is a sign, did he turn him another color? Or what could possibly be a sign that people would, would not kill this guy, right? So let's read. And Yahuwah said to Cain, where is Hebel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I the keeper of my brother? And he said, what, what hast thou done? The voice of the bloods of the murder of thy brother, which are swallowed up in the sod, crieth before me from the earth. And now because thou hast killed him, thou art cursed from the earth, which hath opened the mouth and received the bloods of thy brother from thy hand. When thou tillest the earth, it shall not give to, it shall not Add to give strength to its fruit for thee. A wander and an exile shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said before Yahuwah, More heavy is my rebellion than can be borne. Yet is there yet is there power before thee to forgive it? 
Behold, thou hast cast me forth today from the face of the earth, and from before thee it is possible to be hidden. And because I am a wanderer and an exile on the earth, any just one who findeth me will kill me. And Yahuwah said to him, Behold now, anyone who killeth Cain unto seven generations, vengeance shall be taken of him. And Yahuwah sealed upon the face of Cain the mark of the name, great and honorable, that any one who might find him should not kill him when he saw it upon him. Okay, and the, 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 the other version, when it says Jerusalem, this is yet another version of the Targum that had a different translation, so we'll read that as well. If thou makest thy work good in this world, will it not be forgiven and remitted thee in the world to come? And this is taking us way back up top, I think. Mm -hmm. But if thou do, does not make thy work good in this world, thy sin is retained unto the day of the great judgment. And at the door of thy heart it lieth. Yet into thy hand have I delivered power over evil, passion, and to thee may be dominion over it, to become righteous or to sin. And Cain said to Habel, his brother, come and let us go forth upon the face of the field. And it was when they had gone out upon the face of the field, Cain answered and said to Habel, his brother, there is neither judgment nor judge nor another world. Neither is a good reward given to the righteous, nor will vengeance be taken of the wicked, nor is the world created in goodness, nor in goodness is it conducted. Therefore, it is that thy oblation was accepted with good will and mine not accepted with good will. Hebel answered and said to Cain, there is judgment and there is a judge. There is another world and a good reward is given to the righteous and vengeance taken of the wicked. And in goodness was the world created and in goodness it is conducted. But according to the fruit of thy good works, it is conducted. Because my works were better ordered than thine, my offering was accepted with good will and thine was not accepted with good will. And as they two disputed on the face of the field, Cain arose against Habel his brother and killed him. The voice of the blood of the multitude of the righteous who were to arise from Habel thy brother. Where is this? Why is it we have a 10 here? Anyone? Because it's just the different verses that it's going through. So why does nothing else have a number? I don't know. It's like skipping around. Yeah. And Cain said before Yahuwah, my sins are greater than can be born. Nevertheless, there is power before thee to absolve and forgive me. Okay, and so that's that's heading off to the next one. Yep. So are we ready? We're on 16. Okay. So what do you guys think? Um, um, I think it's fine so far. What, what do you think? What do you think about this mark? Uh, I, it was like a tattoo on his back, like a giant thing. Like on, on his, his forehead or something, wasn't it? It's on his face. It's on his face. But it's like some words. like, like Yeah, like, like it's, it has his like, name in a capital. Yahoo's name on top of his forehead, and nobody's, everyone's going to be scared to death. Now we have an answer. Why nobody would kill this guy, right? Why, why, is, why is this there? Okay, all right, 16. So Cain went out from the presence of Yahuwah and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Kanak. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Kanak. Okay, so who did he just, who did he just marry according, we don't, we don't know this, but we actually, we do know this. His twin. His twin right. is what it was. If you, the only place that we ever have found anything about this is the book of Adam and Eve. Because you would not know at this point, who is this guy going to marry? There's no, only like three no. people on earth. Yeah. There's like four people on earth, right? How would you even know? So it makes sense that Cain had a twin sister, Abel had a twin sister, and the whole dispute over everything, because later on when, when Chef needs a wife, he, there just happens to be a wife there. So according to the book of Adam and Eve, who does, Chef, who does Seth marry? Abel's sister. Abel's sister, right. And so we, we did not know that. No, so this, is, this makes a lot of sense. Okay. You want to read up top now? Okay. And Cain went out from before Yahuwah and dwelt in the land of the wandering of his exile, which had been made for him be, from before as the Garden of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Kanak. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Hanak. Okay, is there anything different in these versions, or do I not read these? I'm not sure. Um, let me read it just to be clear. And Cain went out from before Yahuwah and dwelt in the land of exile and wandering eastward of the Garden of Eden. And it had been before Cain slew Habel his brother that the earth multiplied fruits as the fruits of the Garden of Eden. But from that time, from the time that he sinned and killed his brother, it changed to produce thorns and thistles. Okay, so we know that Adam sinned, and because of that, he had thorns and thistles, and he had to toil in it, right? Or do we know about thorns? We knew about thorns and thistles, mm -hmm. right? And I mean, that was Adam's curse, right? And so basically, the, the earth was changing in that it was less lush and less... Um, 
Less fruitful, Easy. less... Yeah. yeah, less fruitful, that'd be the word. Okay, are we right where we need to be? Yep. Two. 18. And to Kanak was born Irad. And Irad brought forth Me- Mekul. And Mekul brought forth Methuselah. And Methuselah brought forth Lamech. And Lamech took for himself two wives. The name of one was Ada. And the sec- name of the second was Zillah. And Ada bore Yabel. He was the father of those who dwell in tents with livestock. And his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all who play the lyre and flute. As for Zillah, she also bore tubal Cain, a smith of all kinds of tools in bronze and iron. And the sister of tubal Cain was Naaman. Okay, are we ready to go Almost. to the next one? Okay. Is that it? Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. And earlier. Okay, 18. This is in the Targum. And there was born unto Hanak Irad, and Irad begat Mekuajel, and Mekuajel begat Methuselah, and Methuselah begat Lamech, and Lamech took to him two wives, the name of the first, Ada, and the name of the second, Zillah. And Ada bare Yavel, Jabel, and he was the chief rab of all those who dwell in tents, and are masters of cattle, and the name of his brother was Juvo. He was chief rab of all those who take part in the song with lyre and the pipe. And Zilla also bear also Tuvalakane, the chief rab of all artificers who know, know the workmanship, workmanship of brass and iron. And the sister of Tuvalkane was Naama. She was the mistress of elegies and songs. Good. Okay. Anything new here, gentlemen, that we have? I don't think it's much different at all. Okay. And you like where are we at? 23. 23. Okay. And Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, Hear my word, wives of Lamech. Listen to my words, for I have killed a man for wounding me, even a young man for hurting me. Okay, we don't know the story yet. Anybody who's just Jash- reading this doesn't understand what this guy just did. Anyone want to explain this? So in Jasher, we have the story of Tubal Cain, his son. And Tubal Cain was a really small kid. Tubal Cain is seven gener. He's actually the eighth generation. So he's way. He's, he's the eighth. He's like way young. He's super young. They go out hunting, and Lamech is very old at this point. Lamech is blind. Uh, almost yeah, he can't see anymore. He's so old he can barely see. But they go hunting for their food because that's what they had to do at the times. I mean, they're exiled. They weren't on the mountain anymore. They left. So then they see a uh, cane walking in the field and two of is really small. He can't see what it is from a distance. So he thinks it's an animal. So he can't shoot the bow. So Lamech shoots the bow. No, he got, he guides him. He yeah. guides him. He pulls it back, helps the kid guide this back and they flip the arrow out, right? He didn't shoot the arrow. Lamech and basically it, it's Kane. They kill Kane. Basically they, they ran up and saw what they got and it was Kane. And basically out of Lamech's frustration, he clapped his hands together and killed his son. Yeah, he likes like really smashed his hands, I guess, against his head. I like, like one heck of a, a body blow, um, and killed him. So his wife, right here in this in this actual thing, his wives are very upset with him. Like they would not go back to him, and they were very very upset. So he's he's trying to console him. He's like, listen, hear my voice, um, wives of Lamech, listen to my words, for I have killed a man for wounding me, even a young man for hurting me. For Kn is avenged sevenfold, and Lamech seventy sevenfold. Okay. Uh, uh, and Lamech. Okay. And Lamech said to his wives, this is in the uh, Targum. Yeah. And Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice, wives of Lamech. Hearken my words, for I have not killed a man that I should be slain for him. Neither have I destroyed a young man on whose account my children should perish. Okay. The other one said, it, for I killed a man. Mm-hmm. Right. I think he's saying he didn't. He's saying I did not yeah. kill him. That I should be punished. Don't punish me for killing. This yeah, kid. He, he's not. It's, it's not my fault. Yeah, and so I. For I have not killed a man though. Um, that I should perish. Right. For Cain, who sinned and was coveted by repentance, had protection unto seven generations extended to him, and to Lamech, the son of his son, who hath not sinned. It is just that it shall be extended unto seventy and seven. Okay. Uh, anyone have anything for this? No. All right. And where are we at, Eli? Down here. 25. Uh, 25. Okay. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and called his name Sheth. For Elohim has appointed me another seed instead of Hebel, because Cain had slain him. And to Sheth, to him, also a son was born, and he called his name Enosh. Then it was begun to, then it was begun to call on the name of Yahuwah. Okay. Are we ready? Yep. Okay, so up in the Targums, it says this, And Adam knew his wife again. At the end of 130 years after Habel had been slain, and she bare a son, and called his name Sheth. 
For she said, Yahuwah hath given me another son instead of Hebel, whom Cain slew. And to Sheth also was born a son, and he called his name Enosh. That was the generation in whose days they began to err, and to make themselves idols, and surname their idols by the name of the word of Yahuwah. All right, so that is that. What's happening in the chat room? How's everyone? Um, they're good. Anyone know anything happening? And Mr. Elohim says we all need to re re sing the Shema at the end. I said I'd have you read it. And uh. he said I needed to poke the boys with a stick and have <laughs> them spin the L, so... I think James' uh, block is better. James James is the man. But you could read the Shema. Shema. All right. Deuteronomy 6 is what he's after. We're, we're not singers. We're sorry. Yeah. <laughs> one thing we're not. All right. Anything else going on over there? No, that's it. Um, okay. Emissary Valahim just doesn't know about the Targums. He says it's not verified. Um, well, that's what, we we're, that's what we are doing right now is we are verifying it. We are trying to figure out what it is. The only thing that I've seen so far that is outside is that it it brings in Babylonian stuff, but this was written or this was transcribed by a guy out of Babylon exile. So, um, this gives us a lot of stuff. Uh, the question is, do we call this one a wrap? Do we call it a wrap? Anyone else? I think we're, I think we're good. Anyone else want to go further into this? I have the All Shema right. open. You got the Shema? Mm -hmm. All right. You want to do the Shema? Why don't you read the Shema? All right. Up to verse... It's four and five, right? Okay. Hear, O Yisrael, Yahuwah Elohim, Yahuwah is one. And you shall love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart, and with all your being, and with all your might. And these words which I command, which I am commanding you today, shall be in your heart. Okay. So, we are to love our Creator with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, and that is the purpose of where we are today. It is not to love our... Um, our self with everything we have is not to give everything we want to ourselves is, is none of that is the our focus always needs to be on our creator who has given us life he's given us everything that we have he's given us the way forward if you guys are sitting here listening to his laws today then he's given you guys ears to ears to hear eyes to see you guys are able to um, comprehend what our creator has given to us and that in itself is a huge blessing that all of us have been called that we are there's there's a 99.5 percent of the entire world out there that doesn't know who our creator is they don't care about the law statutes and commands and so we are a very unique peculiar group of people that are out there and it is ever so small uh, i knew i know there's other bigger torah channels and they have it seems like they have a ton and ton and ton of people and that's good that's really really good it just seems that the people that we see really are not interested in the torah and it's it's very rare to get people that are just dialed dialed into it and they want to seek the yah uh, and everything that we do so i guess we'll leave it at that um we will wish you guys a shabbat shalom and that you guys have a restful shabbat thank you guys very very much for everybody out there we appreciate you and we hope you guys are good so we will leave it at this we will get one last final uh song out of here and we will end this with that much love to you guys and i'm just gonna hit one we're out
Bye, everybody. All right. Shalom. 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 Shalom.